Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first uh, CCTV basic product training on the Zgate Techo CCTV products. Uh, my name is Edward Seaborn, and I am the product manager for uh, the ZK Techo CCTV uh, division. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to basically be covering firstly our uh, CCTV product range features, benefits, etc. Then we're going to have a look at our product family. And lastly, we're going to look at our VMS and our mobile app. Um, I'm going to ask you to type your questions in the question box available to you. And then afterwards, I will address all those questions uh, individually. I will also have my email address at the end, whereby we can then get into contact with myself and we can then work from there to address all the questions to those that have asked. So firstly, or part one, we've got a product range uh, features. So as you can see on the screen, we have a range of products that's available to everybody in the market currently. We have our um, small bullet, we have our small eyeball, we have a large form dome, a large form bullet, a large form eyeball, and a range of PTZs, both small and large PTZs. Um, the other thing that's important to notice is that the appearance of our cameras are unique and that we have a very stylish and unique body design that's not readily available on the market. And I'm going to touch on a few aspects of our design and what we actually like to offer and what differentiates us from our uh, competitors. So firstly, we have this unique unibody engineered design. Um, so as you can see, it's a, a single aesthetically pleasing uh, design. It is an IP67, which means that it's dust and waterproof. IP67 being uh, for 30 minutes up to one meter in water. Uh, we're not going to be placing it in water, hopefully, because it's not an underwater camera, but it can withstand your rain and and and, uh, and so forth. Our entire range is IP67. The next thing is that we have uh, metal. So this is a metal body uh, instead of the, 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 the standard plastic that is uh, plastic combination with metal in the industry. So this is quite a unique design. And it's not what's called a, 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 a generic um, body design that's open to most manufacturers out there. This is a ZK Teco design product. The next thing that we want to look at is why does the design lend itself to faster and easier installation of our products? So as you can see in the image, we have a Allen key single deadlock, which if I undo this Allen key nut, it allows me to rotate the camera in 360 degrees to get my image upright or uh, the image selection. I can tilt the camera as I wish and I can pan the camera as I wish. And then at the end of the time, I can basically lock this nut and it will uh, fix the camera into a position. This is both available on our eyeballs and on the bullets that's available to the market. The, uh, this is also quite a unique and a, a very innovative uh, design part of the ZK Teco offering. Um, the next part of the camera that um, I'd like to touch on is the transparency PC material, the front cover, the black cover that you see there. Um, this is a, a very, it's an important high quality material. It allows the, the penetration of light up to 90% higher than what's the industry standard. And it's also got an anti-light reflection uh, 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 cover so that what happens is basically because I'm not reflecting any of the light away from the lens of the camera, 
I have got more light coming into the into the the lens factor itself, and therefore I get a, a higher quality image that is being recorded onto my camera range. The next thing is our LEDs. So we have a vehicle industry standard LED, which means that my power efficiency is about 90% more than the common uh, multi-cluster CCTV LEDs out there. Um, as you can see, one piece of our LED is equivalent or equal to 30 pieces of the uh, competitor or the, the standard used LEDs out in the industry. Um, this in turn means that I have lower levels of heat being generated by my LEDs, which means that in the end of the day, I get a better image quality through to my, my, my lens and through my uh, chipset because I don't have a lot of heat noise that is uh, um, taking away from from my uh, from my camera, um, we've also got a smart IR to avoid spotlight issues, and we've got a ceramic base and a larger package for better cooling. So basically, the the unit itself it's common uh, for many of the manufacturers to use either a rubber base or a plastic base or um, just a piece of double sided tape in your cheaper uh, variants of cameras out there and this then doesn't uh, dissipate the the heat generated by my by my uh, products on board as well as for instance a ceramic base does so the next part is obviously our lens and as you can see we've got a seven layer glass a lens with film coated to provide better light penetration. The more light I get into the camera, the better my image quality at the end of the day. Also, we have our cut filters that will turn the infrared filter on and off for nighttime and daytime. And this can withstand up to 100 times switching. So 100,000 times on and off. Uh, the integrated lens module is also there to prefer uh, to improve the focus, the accuracy and stability of the of the camera itself. Um, another quite important factor is the electro uh, the the lightning design or the the design that we've got that makes our camera less prone to lightning uh, damage or for that matter the spikes in your electrical uh, current. So where our competitors normally run a 3 kV uh, protection, we actually have a 6 kV anti-lighting or double ESD protection, which is a lot better than many of the, the cheaper manufacturing uh, uh, cameras out there, the, the, the cameras that we currently use in the market and the, 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 the cheaper brands out there. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to touch on the products family. We're going to touch on the, the naming rules. We're going to go through the, 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 the products that we have on offer and give you a bit more detail on those. So firstly, what we've got is um, we have both an IP solution and an analog HD solution. The analog HD solution has got your 4-in-1 camera and your 4-in-1 DVR. On the IP solution, we have H.265 cameras and we have H.265 NVRs. So before we start, we've got to look at why the cameras are named in the way that they are and the purpose for this. Um, and we've got camera naming rules, which I'll touch on in the next slide. Um, it's to regulate the management of the product and the technical documents. Um, it also, the naming rules helps for uh, further projects and technical documents of our CCTV. Um, and it is our responsibility in the CCTV department to keep updating and maintaining this naming rule. So now number four is the naming rules. So I'm gonna touch on, on the naming rules and how it all works. Um, so firstly, what we have is you will see that 
Um, for example, we've got an EL32A11A. Um, so the E is for your casting type, or in this case, it's an eyeball or a bullet for B or a dome D. Then the next part that we have is we've got the mold dimensions or the size and factor of the unit that you're looking at. So yeah, we have an L for large or an S for small. Um, number three, the product type. So we differentiate between the product types between a three and a five, a three being the analog or HD and five being our IP range. Then we have number four, which is our resolution. So in this case, you can see that the camera is a two megapixel or if it's a four, it's a four megapixel. Or if we advance further to five, six, et cetera, you will get those in there. So we have an eyeball, large, analog, uh, two megapixel. Um, the fifth one or the solution that uh, revolves around the, 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 the lens uh, design. So for us in manufacturing more than for the client to, to order, it is the chipset that is that is being used. Number seven um, is our lens. Um, I've got this wrong, but it's fine. So number seven is the lens. You can see the lens. So you've got a option of a 2.8 mil lens, a 3.6 mil lens, and an eight millimeter lens in this range. And then the casting series is also more for manufacturing than for anything else. We also have naming rules for PTZs. So you've got your casting type, P, PTZ, L, large, the product type, which is five in this case, IP, three uh, analog, the resolution or the megapixels, so two or four, we currently have a uh, two megapixel in our range. Then we have the um, resolution factor. So this uh, will be next in line, our IR range and our zoom range. So uh, it's an 18 times zoom. So this is a PTZ large five megapixel with 18 times zoom. Um, and I think that's fairly simple in, in the naming guidelines. Um, for people to look at. Um, the same rule applies for our DVRs and our NVRs. So I'm going to go over this quickly. Z being the ZK Teco brand, the product type being three or five, once again, either um, IP or analog. The number of channels on this particular um, NVR or DVR, in this case, it's a four channel, or you get a eight channel, or you get a 16 channel, right up to a 64 channel currently. Um, you have the video inputs. Um, in the uh, DVR range, you have um, X being a multi-platform DVR, and I'll touch on that later on. Then your E is your hard disk. Um, so basically how big a hard drives uh, or how many hard drives we can take and then your uh, resolution frame rate and power. So if it's a, a P, that means it's got power over Ethernet um, uh, and so forth. Once again, it is a uh, manufacturing side, but it is good to know that you look at the products and you go, it's a ZK Teco product. It's an analog DVR. It's a four channel uh, DVR and it's a multi-platform DVR. So those are our naming product guidelines. And I, um, I think that that gives you an idea later on when we speak about the products more in detail that you will understand where, we, where we're going. So further on to the product range, we have our three ranges of cameras. As you can see, we've got an L range, an E range, and a P range in our four-in-one HD cameras. So the casing options available to you in the L range or our entry-level range, we have bullet smalls, eyeball smalls, bullet large, dome large. We have a um, AHD TVI, which is your Hikvision uh, protocol, CVI, which is your DAWA protocol, 
CVBS, which is your standard analog protocol or the older analog protocol. Um, in the E range, we have bullet small, eyeball small, dome large, bullet large, and eyeball large, which is the differentiation there. And then in the P range, we've got bullet small, eyeball small, dome large, bullet large, and eyeball large. Once again, all of them have got the four in one capabilities. The L series is a two megapixel or 1080p uh, product. The E series is a 1080p product. And the P series, our high end product, is a four megapixel product range. The sensor sizes, um, obviously, as we look at the sensors, so the better the camera, the better the sensor. Um, we also have, as I mentioned before, various lens factors. So we have on uh, 2.8, 3.6, 2.8 to 12 mil on your large bullets, your large eyeballs, and your large domes. So uh, the, the zoom functionality is there. Also see from the um, horizontal field of view, uh, FOV, what the angle of the lenses are um, on the 2.8, you have a much wider angle of your lens than you, for instance, have on your 3.6 um, lens factor. Uh, you also have the ability to have from a very narrow angle to a very wide angle when you choose the, uh, the manual zoom or the auto automatic zoom function. Next thing that we speak about is our IR distance. So our IR is 10 to 20 meters on your, on your basic your standard bullets and um, 20 to 30 meters on your eyeballs large and your dome larges. We also have a variant launching soon that can give you up to 80 meters of IR distance. Once again, throughout the range, very much the same, 10 to 20 meters or 20 to 30 meters. As I mentioned before, our entire range is IP67 throughout the, um, throughout the, the in, entire range. Um, where do we fit into the market? The L is our entry level AHD camera. So we're looking at an entry level price break there as well. Then on the E level, we're looking at um, people who specifically want a Sony chipset. So that has a Sony chipset. And then lastly, our P range, which is our high end or the four megapixel, which is our high-end focus. That gives you an, a, a good idea of our four-in-one analog cameras. Um, some of the products on the PTZ side, we have a, mainly for your indoor retail environment, which is a, a great little 10 times zoom PTZ. Indoor applications, as I said, for retails. Um, it has LED, it's got a, a uh, 128 presets, which within a small environment is more than enough presets that you can run. Then for our outdoor application, we've got a 60 times uh, infrared unit, uh, 10 times zoom, and also 128 presets. Our uh, 20 times zoom analog PTZ, this is more for the outdoor with up to 120 meters of infrared range. And once again, uh, 128 presets with a 20 times zoom. So 4.7 to 94 mil lens, that should give you a good uh, up to 1,000 meters uh, um, range where I can recognize. Uh, then we have got a analog uh, keyboard support uh, supports your Palco D and your Palco P protocols through 485 or 232. It is a 3D joystick, so I can zoom left, right, up, down, uh, and do whatever I require on that. And you've got your pan, tilt, and zoom function on board the PTZ. So from the PTZ range, we cover quite an array of application requirements together with obviously our uh, previous range of cameras that is available. The DVRs, um, it's a five in one DVR. So we have your, your uh, TVI um, 
CVI, uh, CVBS, your analog outputs as per normal, uh, four channel up to a 16 channel, uh, 1080N, which is your entry level or not true 1080p uh, unit. You've got a full 1080p unit and you've got a four megapixel unit for when you're using your four megapixel cameras. Um, it doesn't help putting a four megapixel camera onto a 1080p unit because your resolution is just not going to function well and you're going to get flicker and loss. So as I said before, uh, four channel, eight channel and 16 channel, uh, the 16 channel up to 12 frames a second, which is great for uh, general viewing purposes. Uh, we do not need real time uh, um, resolution when, we, when we're looking at uh, an entry level uh, product, um, but it's, it gives you good enough frame rates so that I can, I can honestly look at almost any application out there and not miss any footage. Um, output, I've got an HDMI, out, uh, HDMI output and a VGA output uh, on, your, on the back of the unit. Um, I have a network port that I can, um, I can put the unit onto the network and uh, remotely access it. We'll talk a bit later about my, my apps that I am running. Um, does it have audio? Yes, it's got audio on one channel. And what hard drives can we put in? So we can put a, up to an eight terabyte, one by eight terabyte slot in the four channel and up to two by eight terabytes in the 16 channel. And that is throughout the range. So my four megapixel up to uh, two by eight terabyte slots in the unit itself. Benefits of using our DVR. As I said before, it's a universal camera support. So I can plug my competing brands into my DVR and I will be able to automatically pick up the different uh, 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 modes that they are running in. Um, so whether it's an AHD, a TVI, a CVI, CVBS or an IP signal, I can then pick that up through my, through my DVR. Uh, resolution up to four megapixel. So uh, four megapixels up to 15 frames a second. Recording as 15 frames a second and live view at 25 frames a second. I support up to a 4K HDMI output, so I can put a uh, 4K screen on the unit and have the full quality that needs the, to be put through. It doesn't help having a uh, 4 megapixel uh, camera on the 4 megapixel DVR, but I'm only pushing through to a 1080p screen. I will lose some of my resolution. Um, it supports 8.264 compression. So what that means is H.264 plus, um, I, have, uh, I have a longer recording time at a uh, lower uh, compression, therefore meaning that I have uh, less cost involved with my storage. And that is important as well, because when we are starting to, to look at a lot of uh, storage space required, uh, then it's, it, it can become cost, uh, a costly exercise. I've got a friendly uh, GUI or a user interface, graphical user interface, that is easy to install. It's an intuitive operation. The operation is so easy that you literally can just scan a, a code and it has a wizard available to you. We've got a bandwidth uh, that we can see and I've got my streaming optimization. So I can go through my my DVR and I can use my settings to optimize my streaming functionalities. Um, main functions, H.264 and H.264 plus compression uh, works with the TP chipset. I have, as I mentioned before, I've got my auto detection for whichever mode of camera I'm using. I have got cloud storage and peer to peer functionality available on the unit. I support Onverb S profiles for my IP cameras. I have got uh, my PC client software, which once again, we'll touch on later, either on Windows or on Mac. And we have my mobile application. And we have 
smart face detection and search functionality. So very, very, very basic analytic on my AHD units. On the uh, H.265 IP camera range, once again, we've got three ranges as we had with the um, AHD range. We've got our E range, our W range, and our P range. So in our E range and our W range, we've got your 1080p or two megapixels uh, available to you. Then we've got four megapixel resolution on the, the P range. The units have a varying wide dynamic range. Uh, the E series has got uh, an entry level, it's got digital wide dynamic range. The W series has got true wide dynamic range and the four megapixel also has true wide dynamic range. Um, low light capabilities because of the Starlight um, chipset within my W range, I have much better uh, quality uh, low light pictures on the W range, but the P range has got a far improved uh, video, video analytics uh, that is accessible on the camera. Once again, we have a range of lens options. 2.8, 3.6, and a 2.8 to 12 mil throughout our ranges, whether that be the, um, the bullets, the eyeballs, or the domes. Uh, once again, you can see my field of view uh, within the, the lens factors. So from a narrow to a fairly wide uh, angle lens that I can select from, my infrared distances on board the cameras, on the eyeballs and the, the bullets, 10 to 20 meters on the basics, 20 to 30 meters on the, on the IP, the large form factor domes, the large form factor eyeballs. Um, throughout, and as I mentioned before, we're launching a 60 to 80 meters. Um, features, we've got excellent high definition image with wide dynamic range that's true wide dynamic range we've got the motorized lens options and ip67 throughout the range wide dynamic range with starlight capabilities due to the the, the chipset that we use on the w range uh, we have the motorized options available and ip67 um, and the same goes for the e-series except yeah we have digital wide dynamic range, not true wide dynamic range. This is our entry level product, uh, projects that need true starlight or uh, once again, the Tony, Stony chipsets, we will use the W4. And then where you need high resolution, we will use the P range of cameras. So within our cameras, we have got basic IVA and I'm not gonna go too much uh, depth into this right now because that is part of the next training session. We have an option for face detection. We have tripwire invasion. We can uh, check on loitering, uh, retrograding, or um, the directional that a person may enter or exit an area from. Uh, video quality detection. We've got object loss detection, so we can search for an object that's been removed or when a, 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 a object has been left in a specific area, we've got the, the leftover detection, um, object left detection. Um, the NVR, as I stated before, is an H.265 NVR. I'll get to the benefits of that shortly. Uh, once again, we've got a POE range and a non-POE range. And I will touch on the reasoning behind that now. So when we have a four channel up to basically a 32 channel um, with 16 POEs, you have a less distributed installation. So it's fine running the cameras off the POE in NVR. We have four channel, a channel, 16 channel, and a 32 channel option. Hard drive capabilities, one times eight terabytes up to two by eight terabytes. So as you can see, four channels with four channel POE because generally the installation will be close and we can run the network cable from the device. Um, eight channels, also relatively close. 16 channels, relatively close. 
32 channels we start playing on a distributed net uh, installation so i only have 16 channels of poe on my 32 channel the other 32 uh, or the other 16 channels uh, will be needing to run off a poe switch which we do not supply um, non-poe nvrs for this where you are going to require a, uh, a distributed or a, a, a larger installation the distances might be a bit further so you're going to put your field switches your poe field switches uh closer to the installation points once again four channel a channel 16 channel 32 channel and up to 64 channels uh in in uh, uh, available the 64 channel 16 by 8 terabyte uh storage available 8 by 8 terabytes on the 32 channel down to 1 by 8 terabytes on the 4 channel as you can also see this is a um, 8 megapixel NVR so we can cater for much higher resolution cameras as well on board um, once again I have my HDMI and my VGA out and I have audio out on these units now what is the benefit of having H.265 in your liner? So basically, I have reduced my storage and my bandwidth by at least 50%, which means that when we look at our competitors still running on H.264, MJPEG, any of these older uh, compression ratios, they will require much more uh, a much larger bank of hard drives to store the same amount of data also when we are looking at bandwidth usage i can um, i can half the bandwidth usage within my network which means that i can also uh, run my system on an existing infrastructure without affecting my quality of service too much uh, which in turn helps to on your larger projects to help in uh, cutting costs. Um, we've got a few other benefits that are in the, the product lineup. We have uh, HLC or highlight uh, compensation. So what we've got is with highlight compensation on, we do not have that real bright glare from the, from the image as much on the, the cameras. Uh, which means that I can I can use it better for your vehicle entrances where I have problems with uh, cars light shining at night. We also have a defog option. So as you can see, yeah, with defog off, I cannot really see through the the fog and the glare. With defog on, I can see the buildings clearer. I can see what's happening on the other side of the image um, through the window. So that helps where we have a, uh, a blurry image, a dusty image, an area with, uh, with uh, particles in the air. Um, so that, that is one of the functions that we have. We also have um, the two types of wide dynamic range. We've got the digital wide dynamic range on our entry level camera. And we've got physical wide dynamic range on our uh, W range and our P range. As you can see, uh, real physical or true wide dynamic range is far better in its image production um, that I can, I can see the image on the other side with bright sunlight shining through the door. I am not blinded as much as, uh, as with no wide dynamic range or with the, the digital wide dynamic range. You won't really install a digital wide dynamic range camera looking straight out the window um, as this is not the general installation processes that will take place however with physical wide dynamic range i am able to see through these bright lights um, now we're going to touch on the the mobile app or and our uh, video management software uh, part three uh, of our basic uh, training so the the platform that we use is called antavis and antavis is 
when you're buying a DVR and an NVR, you get an installation CD with antivirus uh, um, that can be uh, loaded onto onto the your your laptop um, for connection. So this is support the central management for both the IP cameras and the NVRs. It supports up to 64 channels with uh, PVU uh, synchronizing, um, 36 channels of payback. playback. Um, we have the video loss, motion detection, privacy mask, and the uh, intelligent perimeter alarm displayed on screen. So various uh, uh, colored blocks will appear depending on, on your settings. We have the support for the PTZ, so we can put our presets, our tours, and our scans on the PTZ. Uh, it supports your 3D positioning and virtual mouse operation. So we do not need a, uh, a joystick controller to run our PTZs if we run the Antovers. And it supports peer-to-peer uh, -peer login and the cloud functionality. So what does it look like? Um, it's a very friendly uh, graphical user interface. Uh, it looks, uh, the Antovers platform takes on the, the green of the ZK Teco brand. Um, it's modular in design, its functions, and it's, it's layered in its application. So by clicking my right mouse, I can go back to the previous menu. It is, once again, very easy to use and to set up and this will also then be handled in our next training session where we will go more into detail on our uh, applications as such. As you can see we've got our PTZ control, we've got an alarm preview panel and a uh, the output towards a video wall that we can run. Um, I'm not going to go into too much details as this would take away from my next training. So what have we got on our mobile app? Once again, we've got a very friendly graphical user interface, supports up to 16 channels uh, on our uh, mobile devices. It supports QR code scanning to add my devices, which means I can use my, uh, the app, I can scan the QR code that is displayed on my NVR, and I can connect them seamlessly to the, the device. Um, it supports local and remote playback for images and devices. So I can store um, some of the, the, the footage on my phone if so needed, or I can just look at what the footage is on the NVR. Supports alarm push functionality. So if there's an alarm on the NVR, I can then support this and push that through to my cell phone and pick these alarms up as a notification. And we support both Android and uh, iOS or iPhone versions. What does it look like once again? Um, so I would select my devices. I can, uh, I can log into my devices. I can have a single view or a multi view um, of my screens. I can do my playbacks. I can go into my recordings. Um, really an, uh, a very easy app to work with. And depending on the quality of your mobile device, um, nowadays easily tier two megapixels up um, viewing on the cameras. So really good quality mobile app where we have Antov Viz on our, on our PC platform. We have the app Antov View on our mobile app. Um, as I said, We've got your device management, so I can log into a, a multiple number of devices. I've got live view. I can see my, my playback on the unit. I can see the events. Uh, I can use it as a remote. We've got our event sharing. So what is going to happen? We can push uh, events through to the mobile app, and I can see what events has taken place on the app. Once again, I'm not going to go into too much detail. This will be covered in our next uh, training session. Playback. Um, I can select time, date, uh, cameras. 
uh, individual cameras or multiple of cameras um, and a mixture of live and recorded. Uh, so really, really nice application to run from your mobile app. Once again, because I'm running H.265 as my uh, streaming, I will also use less data when looking at my mobile applications. Lastly, our products are compatible with biosecurity. So where we have uh, our biosecurity, uh, ZK biosecurity running on our access control platform, I can select my Onviv cameras or my AHD recorder. I can then through my devices whereby uh, let's say we have a access control uh, uh, event taking place. Somebody is scanning their card or a finger or their face at a device, let's say at a turnstile, and I want the footage to be brought onto biosecurity. I can send, uh, send this through to uh, biosecurity so I can send an image or a, uh, a, a small video clip on biosecurity. I can also search when, for instance, Edward has, um, has scanned in at a certain device and an image clip will then accompany that, uh, that search. Um, you've got a selection currently supported is obviously our ZK brand. We support Dawa, we support Hikvision natively in our uh, biosecurity. Um, and it's, it's very simple to add these these linkages to our cameras, you will basically give the device uh, IP, to, IP address, link it to the, the port uh, and uh, link it to your, your, uh, your reader in, in, in this case, and it will link the, the camera to the reader. So I'd like